good morning everyone i'm kanika i'm a phd student under dr bernard butler and dr brendan jennings uh, and the topic is session service on vehicle clusters uh, so the main motivation of our work is that vehicles spend a significant amount of time in uh, urban congestion and uh, these vehicles have unrealized computational and uh, communication capacity uh, that can be used they especially have embedded sensors and built-in cameras that can be used to collect information. Now, unlike sensor, inf uh, sensor data, video information, it requires a lot of computation processing. And the idea is to not send all this collected information to the cloud. Instead, we want to process most of this information close to the source of data generation. And hence, we want to select vehicles based on their predictable uh, mobility patterns. And uh, once we have selected vehicles, we want to place distributed services on these vehicles as we know each vehicle won't have enough processing capacity. Uh, so one of our motivation factors is uh, we don't, instead of uh, installing new infrastructure for surveillance of road traffic conditions, especially in conditions like these where we can analyze how uh, restrictions uh, due to the COVID-19 are being followed uh, in different parts of the city, uh, instead of installing more infrastructure, we want to use the vehicles that are already there on the road. Um, what vehicles get in return is incentives from the service providers for leasing uh, their resources. Um, and uh, so the, we also say that these vehicles have predictable mobility patterns based on fix, fixed routes during weekdays and other behavioral patterns uh, during weekends. And as autonomous cars become more common, these mobility patterns become more explicit and can be uh, used to select vehicles that have more predictable and stable uh, trajectory. So, um, sorry. So this is the kind of service that uh, we take. We take different service. So for example, one uh, S1 here in the type graph could just be collecting data. The other would be doing uh, 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 data filtering. The, uh, the next uh, instance would be transferring it to the RSU or the, or the cloud. But we want to scale these services in real time based on both the mobility and the resource state of the vehicle cluster, which is the challenging part here. Deciding how many instances each of these services should have is another challenge that we face but one of our main reasons for doing this is a uh, we want we know that each vehicle won't have enough computation capacity and second we also want to make these services robust because due to the mobility there will be link failure there'll be node failure there'll be vehicles going in and out of the cluster Another thing is if you're using moving vehicles as fog node, it reduces the service migration between different fog nodes when cli client vehicles are traveling along the fog nodes. And uh, the third motivation could be that uh, for uh, applications like driving assistance systems, you require very precise uh, data and which requires of obviously which the processing of which is computationally intensive. So you have more and more instances of a particular service type to meet most of your processing requirements and to then send this data to um, uh, the roadside unit or the cloud. Uh, this model can also be extended in many different ways. For example, uh, your 5G base stations um, um, signal processing requirement, the broadband signal processing requirements can be offloaded to these vehicle clusters. So it can bo go both ways. Uh, uh, all the data can be collected on these vehicle clusters and sent to the roadside unit or data can, or uh, processing can be offloaded from roadside units to these vehicle clusters. Uh, so uh, to convince, uh, uh, to basically predict that can these vehicles be used, we um, we focus on a road network near Dublin uh, airport using the vehicle density data captured by the uh, Transport Infrastructure Ireland uh, uh, traffic website. What we have is uh, uh, stochastic traffic flows at an intersection and we predict the vehicle trajectory from different points. So as you can see on the screen from A to C, A to B, some have very stable, for example, the route from A to B that goes towards the airport have very stable uh, uh, traffic almost for all weeks of the uh, for all days of the week so we uh, basically build up a model to predict the traffic flows at these different road segments and thus six different driving profiles can be built that is vehicles going from a to b a to c c dash to a dash so on and so forth 
So what we've done is we've used simple regression, linear regression to do uh, vehicle uh, density estimates. Uh, the, f uh, the first two graphs on the top, uh, uh, top layer is basically the linear regression and we get base. Uh, uh, we do it for a <clears throat> for data collected in an interval of 5, 10, and 15 minutes. And these intervals are chosen uh, chosen based on the uh, peak and off-peak traffic time, uh, the time that it takes to uh, uh, travel from two different uh, segments in the intersection. And uh, we roughly get a, uh, we did not get a good accuracy. We got an accuracy around 95%. So then we used multivariate linear regression and considered data for the last seven days. Uh, and we got fairly good uh, uh, traffic prediction, almost 99% uh, um, uh, in the span of 15 minutes. Um, we've also, uh, in the la in the second lane, in the last two graphs, we have also done this same prediction to validate our model in the case of uh, April 2020 data. Uh, as you can see, the total vehicle density has gone down significantly from 1400 to say 200 or 400. Uh, but again, we got a very good accuracy of 97 or 98 um, percent. So which which implies that this flow model can be used in different uh, intersections uh, and will give you a fair idea of what uh, uh, density you can estimate. And based on that density, you can uh, uh, predict if it is useful to um, deploy service chains on these vehicle clusters. Uh, we've also uh, plotted some uh, vehicle densities uh, for four consecutive days. Now in the top graph is three different weeks in January 2020. And you can see that for the red, green and blue, which are the three different cases, the traffic uh, pattern is very, very similar and the peak traffic times can be calculated. The jam factor or the uh, congestion factor, which is based on the average speed of a particular road segment, can also be predicted very easily. Uh, the second graph that you see is basically for uh, the top green one is still a uh, traffic density for January 2020 but the graph but the plots underneath it are for April 2020 now as you can see the vehicle density has reduced significantly there is a anomaly uh, where you can see there are very less traffic for a particular i think it was the second week of April second or the third week of April which was a bank holiday and which is why there is a slightly different vehicle uh, vehicle density but the pattern remains pretty much the same so from this work, we could say that, yes, there have been very strong uh, results as to this vehicle density for a particular traffic flow can be estimated. Uh, there are many other sources of these macroscopic kind of data. Macroscopic data is where you do not have the knowledge of individual vehicles, but you have a, a estimate of the flow of a vehicle. Uh, these kinds of data basically are vehicle density data that is average number of vehicles at a particular road segment they could be the average uh, um, speed of the traffic flow so this what you're seeing right now is a snapshot of uh, vehicle data from um, uber uh, open data and uh, the different colors in the road segment shows the speed and how uh, far away are they from the percent uh, from free flow um, so this kind of macroscopic data are available and such density estimates can be made from it to see is it really feasible to place vehicles on uh, uh, place service service chains on these vehicle clusters uh, uh, our interest is more in microscopic vehicular data because we want to see how vehicles can stay together and execute a service our main focus is uh, on a vehicle clusters. So what we did is we used these macroscopic data and uh, for, for approximately the last three months uh, in case of the Dublin intersection and simulated the data into our uh, SUMO simulator, which is a simulator for urban mobility and where microscopic data for each vehicle can be uh, uh, can be uh, simulated. So uh, what we got out of that is we predicted if these vehicles can be used as a, a communication infrastructure. Um, if you just give me a second, please. 
Yeah, so uh, there there are estimates that says that uh, if a average vehicle flow at a particular road segment is less than 20 uh, meters per second, then that vehicle can be used as a, a commun then that vehicle cluster can be used as a communication infrastructure. So uh, based on the vehicle density data, we plotted the average flows for uh, the six road segments that we spoke about uh, at AM peak and PM peak, which we also derived from uh, the data. And based on the estimates, it can be seen that for most road segments uh, can be considered as a communication infrastructure because of the slow speed during the AM and PM uh, peak time. Uh, now we have a mathematical model uh, uh, which basically uh, solves for the constraints related to the resources, constraints related to the mobility. So we use all this uh, uh, flow model and use Markov chains to basically put the behavioral patterns and the mobility patterns of these vehicles and consider it in our um, uh, service placement algorithm. Uh, there's a little bit of background to it, so I'm sorry if I'm being a little I'm missing out some details here. But basically, our aim here was to say that can these vehicle clusters be used as communication and computation infrastructure? And uh, uh, there, there is a derived relationship between uh, mobility and uh, the connectivity. And there is a power law decline when a cluster speed is larger than a certain threshold. And then the, that threshold is decided to be 20 meters per second for a particular cluster size. So um, unfortunately, like this is not the main work that we do. Uh, the main work that we do is the placement of uh, service clusters, uh, service chains on vehicle clusters. So there are a lot of things related to this. The dynamic topology of these vehicles lead to link and connection failures, which affect the offloading and the service quality. Uh, there is a difficulty in estimating the utilization and allocation of uh, resources for each vehicle. And there is also the problem of prediction accuracy of vehicle locations and which vehicles would be more uh, uh, stable than the others. Uh, so for such things, we need to take into account things like take back schemes, wherein uh, if a vehicle is processing a particular flow or collecting a particular flow, but is about to leave the cluster, it sends back that information uh, to the vehicle cluster uh, so as to avoid a vehicle cluster. In certain cases, that is not possible. And then, you know, services will have to be uh, uh, re-optimized and would have to be reconfigured and placed on the vehicle cluster. Uh, our approach is to not do everything in a central manner. We want to make sure that most of this thing is done in a distributed manner where vehicles themselves decide where to uh, send the flows to which services to send, uh, uh, which uh, vehicles to send this information to. And uh, what we focus on is how can we improve the task execution rate, we can reduce service latency and also make these services really robust and reliable. Um, there are many other uh, challenges. There is a problem of setting pricing strategy for these flow. Uh, this particular model has a potential of being a, a fog marketplace, but then there is a there is a problem of how do we decide the pricing stra uh, strategy for uh, for uh, for such a, um, um, a task a service placement on a vehicle cluster. So um, so. Uh, uh, there are many different solutions that can be used. Some of them are based on redesigning the utility function of a uh, machine learning algorithm. That is learning based task of loading frameworks for vehicles to learn potential task of loading performances. Uh, there is a way of redesigning these utility functions of uh, multi arm banded theory and balancing the trade off between exploration and exploitation and then redesigning the utility function uh, because our action space is time varying and even the load is time varying. So um, uh, they're basically uh, the computation capacity of these vehicles are also used uh, shared by multiple tasks. So there are many, many, many different challenges that come in uh, doing the task of loading or task placement in this particular case. So uh, 
we have a lot of work left to do. We uh, want to make our service model really flexible, wherein we uh, don't pre-advise the number of service components of each type that we want to place in our model. Uh, we want to decide it in real time based on the number of, uh, uh, based on the resource availability, based on the amount of video data collection, and based on the other QoS requirement. Uh, we currently have a heuristic and offline solution for placing these services on on uh, uh, um, vehicle cluster and node selection. We want to come up with, an, uh, we, we're working on an online algorithm and seeing how we can measure uh, if these services are uh, useful in terms of quality, uh, what kind of uh, video data is collected, what kind of processing capacity it takes, what time, what kind of uh, um, service latencies we face in this particular case. And like I mentioned earlier, we also want to introduce service reconfiguration because as everything is moving, the infrastructure is moving, we want to make sure that uh, services are reconfigured, but this reconfiguration doesn't cause more overhead. So uh, that is going to be the next set, next set of work that we are doing and we're currently doing and the set of work that we would be moving on to next. So um, thank you. That's my um, uh, presentation. I'm sorry if it was a little rushed. I was trying to cover a lot of things at once. <clears throat> Thanks, Kanika. Does anyone have any questions? Sorry, Kanika, John Ronan here. I was, yes. I was new to there. I have a question for you as regards the um, the data set you use. Mm -hmm. Have you tried it on uh, data sets from other parts of the world? Uh, uh, um, John, that's actually a very good question. Uh, yes, I have taken considerations of London traffic, a lot of which uh, San Francisco as well. A lot of it is a Manhattan grid kind of a, a road structure, yeah. uh, whereas this M50 traffic is very, very flow based. Right. So uh, here, uh, when you have a Manhattan grid type structure, at every junction, there will be a new probability for a vehicle to, uh, to take. Yeah. So it becomes a very, very, it, 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 it is a challenging use case, if I may. And it is going to be our next step to uh, compare this kind of free flow uh, Dublin M50 type traffic to more complex, slow moving kind of models where, uh, you know, Manhattan grid type situation is there and the probability of the vehicle changes very, very fast at every um, intersection, if I may. So, okay. yes. That that is that is something that we we are looking forward to to. Okay, thanks. Hi, Kanika. Uh, hey. Dixon here. So it's yes, very hi. interesting topic, and I have one question to ask you. Uh, if yes. You, I I just saw some graph like you you mentioned that you are using multivariate linear regression and stuff. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for example, if you can go to the previous graph, I can see the all the graph looks like like time series the data. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the reason behind using only multivariate regression? Instead of that, I feel that uh, you you can get better results. I don't know. I feel that it might be a good idea to use maybe like time series. Why why not to use time series models instead of multivariate regression? Uh, that's that's actually a very good question, Dixon. Thank you. Um, uh, basically, um, what I presented here is uh, validating why we are placing um, uh, service chains on vehicle clusters. Uh, I would love to improve these mobility models, so I would definitely look into the time series uh, uh, instead of multivariate linear regression. Sort of it's a starting point into justifying what we are trying to do. At the same time, we are not, our, my, my PhD is not exactly based on uh, 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 data analysis and stuff. So what we were trying to do here, what we're trying to achieve here is to just justify this placement on vehicle clusters. But like you suggested, I'd love to uh, use better, uh, like like you suggested, time series and other methods and compare which one works best and then uh, go forward with it. So I think uh, that's I a think, great suggestion. Yeah. yeah, I understand that because you don't, you don't want to go into data, data analysis, but if, for mm -hmm. example, if you want to find like a be the best the optimal cluster yeah. vehicle clusters for suppose if you use the monte carlo regression monte carlo analysis as you mentioned 
then you can mm -hmm. easily compute the posterior distribution of the mean, whatever the parameter that you are looking for. I think that would be, that would give the given probabilistic overview of selecting parameters right. or selecting clusters, the be best cluster based on your whole ser service replacement or service assignments and stuff. Sure, I, I, I definitely take a look at it. Thank you for your suggestion, Dixon. Uh, hi, Kanika. Uh, very hey. nice work. And uh, I'm Noman here. Very nice work. Hi, Norman. And I can see uh, many applications of these kind of predictions, especially mm -hmm. when we can integrate this for cyber physical systems or uh, mm -hmm. uh, for the optimization of uh, intelligence transportation system or mm -hmm. even joint optimization of ITS network and energy network, like okay. for dynamic pricing and those kind of things. Uh, right. It can be integrated and there are many applications. Right. Uh, one thing I would like to know is like, uh, are you interested in uh, doing short term predictions or long term predictions or are you um, considering both? I uh, for for me currently it it's short term prediction. Uh, what it does is I think you mean short term and long term in terms of vehicle trajectory uh, or right, do you yeah. mean it over time? Over time, actually. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, what we've noticed is the vehicle uh, prediction changes significantly every month. So when we were using, uh, it, it's also a research question in its own right as to how much data you should consider to make such predictions. And we were noticing that the mobility patterns change very significantly, even at a macroscopic level. What we are more interested in is individual trajectory of vehicles. Now, what people do is generally they take bus and taxi trajectories because they are more openly available and they are more um, uh, they are more predictable, if I can, with some delay here and there in the morning and the evening uh, bus timings. Uh, we are more interested in general uh, public being able to lease their resources, which is where the challenge comes. So we, we would technically be interested in long term uh, uh, mobility patterns. But A, there is the privacy concern. That is, nobody would like to share their trajectory patterns explicitly. Uh, so what we would be trying to do is just taking a sp span of one or two kilometers. And then for now, we are just simulating these uh, uh, vehicle trajectories based on historical data. So um, there is this gap of knowledge uh, that we are trying to uh, fill. And do you plan to uh, address some trust and privacy issues also in future? Uh, it's not part of my uh, PhD, okay. but I can acknowledge that it's a it's it's a it's a problem and a question here as to how to address the trust and the security. But mm -hmm. like uh, there there is some work in for computing and trust and sec uh, privacy, but like it's not currently it's not part of my work. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Naman.